So we just defined the derivative, and remember, the derivative is defined by a limit, and we saw in the first few weeks that limits don't necessarily have to exist. So consequently, the derivative is not necessarily going to have to exist, at least at a point it may not exist. And we're going to look at how the derivative could not exist at a given point. And to do that, let's start with some definitions. Um, well, maybe I should have said we're going to talk about what it means for a function to be differentiable. And we'll call this topic differentiability. So definition. f of x is differentiable at a. So differentiable at a point is this first definition. f is differentiable at a point if the derivative exists at that point. Okay. Um, so when we defined continuity, um, we defined continuous at a point and continuous and a function which is continuous and continuous at a point satisfied a condition a function which is continu continuous satisfied that condition everywhere and differentiable will be the same thing differentiable at a point if the derivative exists at a uh, when I said the same differentiable is not the same thing as continuous it's the same um, idea these first two definitions differentiable at a point if the derivative exists at that point um, actually I could have just said if f prime of a exists if f prime of a exists at a, that's redundant. Um, the next definition, f is differentiable, so overall it's differentiable, if f prime of x exists for all x in the domain of f of x. We have differentiable at a point, and if it's differentiable everywhere, we say that we have a differentiable function. And there's a nice theorem relating differentiability and continuity. And we have it here. If f of x is differentiable, so meaning if the derivative exists everywhere, then f of x is continuous. So right here, all differentiable functions are continuous, is what that says. Well, the natural next mathematical question is, are all continuous functions differentiable? So if we flip this around and consider the statement, if f is continuous, then is f differentiable? Well, that does not hold. So remark, the converse of this statement, meaning the statement, if f is continuous, then is f differentiable, that does not hold. And we're going to look at an example. Um, so what we're going to do with this example is find a continuous function which is not differentiable. And if we find a continuous function which is not differentiable, then the converse of this does not hold. Well, how are we going to conclude that a function uh, is not differentiable. Well, it's not differentiable if f prime x doesn't exist at a given point. So we need to find a function and we need to find a point at which that function is not differentiable. Um, so maybe I should say something like that. And I'll say it after we do the example. Uh, I'll make a concluding sentence. Example. Um, we're actually going to consider three examples uh, which serve as counterexamples for the converse of this statement. Um, but we will look at one in more detail than the other two. And it will be this one. f of x is absolute value of x, and here we're going to use the piecewise definition of absolute value of x. Absolute value of x is x, or positive x, or for zero. Absolute value x is negative x for negative x. And we're going to show that this is not, well, we're going to show, um, maybe I'll, I'll write it like this. We show f of x is absolute value of x is continuous, but uh, I'll put this on the next board. I should be able to fit this all on two boards if I go like this. But, yeah, let's spell but correctly. But, not differentiable. I'll just say DIF. We'll show it's continuous, but, but not differentiable. And to show it's not differentiable, we're going to show it's not differentiable at a point. In this case, we're going to show it's not differentiable at, um, I'm going to say x equals 0. Um, I could say a be consistent with that. I'll, I'll just say that x equals 0. 
Um, so why is this a continuous function? Well, we'll use our pen lifting definition for continuous. I'll just write it like that. So there's this function. It is continuous. So now we need to show it's not different. How are we going to show it's not differentiable? Well, we need to show f prime at, in this case, 0 does not exist. So um, to show f prime of 0 does not exist, well, how do we find the derivative at a point? We do not have lecture 5.2 yet. This is lecture 5.1. So what do we have for differentiable at a point? Well, at the beginning of the definition of the derivative video, when we talked about secant lines approaching tangent lines, we, de de we defined uh, what it meant. Well, we defined an equation that would tell us the derivative at a point, the slope of a tangent line at that point. Um, so to show f prime of 0 does not exist, we show the limit as x approaches 0, what was, um, so we had two different notations for um, the derivative at a point. The first one was directly from choosing two points, uh, labeling them a and x. Um, the second one had h's. We're using here the first uh, definition. It's a little easier to simplify in this case. But in that, the slope of the secant line was given by f of x. We're, if we're considering the point x equals 0, the slope of the secant line would have been, uh, maybe I will, uh, okay, sorry about that. I'm going to say a equals 0. Um, okay. It, it really doesn't matter. But um, in the definition, we did use a, so I'm going to change that to a. But we defined the slope of a tangent line as the limit as our variable approach to the point in question of the slope of the secant line. Change in y over change in x. So to show f prime of 0 doesn't exist, we show that this limit does not exist. Well, how are we going to do that? Um, well, how can we show a limit doesn't exist? We'll show it's different on both sides of 0. So limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x. Well. Uh, how does this simplify? It simplifies to that. Why does it simplify to that? f of x equals absolute value of x. f of 0, absolute value of 0 is 0. So the top simplifies to absolute value of x, bottom simplifies to x. So what we're going to do is show that these two limits are not the same at left and zero. So we're going to show these two limits are not the same. Well, what's this first limit? Well, let's simplify it a little. Um, absolute value of x, we're approaching a zero from the right, which means we're looking at the top piece of this function. So that's what? That's uh, um, my room x, absolute value of x for positive x is just x. So the numerator simplifies to that. How do we evaluate this limit? Well, you try a substitution, you'll get a 0 over 0, but fortunately this fraction reduces to 1. And the limit as x approaches 1, or as x approaches 0 of 1 is just 1. How about the next one? Limit as x approaches 0 from the left, absolute value of x over x. Well, we're on the left of 0 now, so we're over on this piece. We're looking down here. The limit on the left, or the, the absolute value of x on the left of 0 is negative x. So we get negative x over x. Well, again, you try a substitution, you get 0 over 0, but Uh, this fraction, negative x over x, reduces to negative 1. x's cancel, you're left with a negative 1, and as x approaches 0, uh, maybe I'll put that in parentheses, and as x 
approaches zero, negative one doesn't change. So we have that the limit on the right of zero was one, the limit on the left of zero is negative one. So uh, I'll say so f prime of zero does not exist, because f prime of zero does equal this limit. So what have we actually done there? Well, we found a function which is continuous and which is not differentiable at zero. So we found a function which is continuous and not differentiable. Um, so uh, what should I write about that? Uh, so I'll just say, therefore, f of x equals absolute value of x is a function which is continuous but not differentiable. And why is it not differentiable? Well, it's not differentiable uh, because it's not differentiable at zero. It needs to be different. The derivative needs to exist everywhere for it to be differentiable. And in this case, all we needed was one bad point. Now, this, this um, property, which resulted in a lack of differentiability, generalizes. Because look at what happens here. Well, let's draw the function a little bigger. Let's erase this so I have some boards. So let's say, um, actually, how did I phrase it in my notes? Where did I put my notes? Over here. How did I phrase it here? I like this phrasing. Okay. Um, the following are graphs of functions. which are continuous but not differentiable. T. So the following are functions, are graphs of functions are continuous but not differentiable. And these will be in the most general form. So first of all, what happened with the absolute value of x? Well, at zero, the absolute value of x had what's known as a corner point. Now, can we see this lack of differentiability at that corner point? So let's uh, say 1, corner. Can we see that lack of differentiability at that corner? Well, the computation we did over here for the absolute value of x says on the right of zero, on the right of zero, slopes of tangent lines are positive. On the left of zero, slopes of tangent lines are negative one. Well, let's look at how a tangent line travels through this curve. And here I just moved the zero over um, so it was you know, so it wasn't intersecting any other lines. Well let's look at tangent lines here. Tangent lines as we approach this corner point look like this all the time until we get to that corner point. What happens when we get to that corner point? It starts being a tangent line like this, a positive tangent line. For the regular absolute value function, these slopes were negative one until we got here. Then they shift around like that. So they quickly shift around to a positive one. And they travel through uh, the rest of the curve. Um, that same property will hold for any corner like this. So this could be, you know, it could be like a, a very narrow V-shaped where it has a very positive slope and then it goes, or a very negative slope, and then it goes back around to a very positive slope. Um, but when that happens, when we have a corner point like this, the derivative will not exist at that point A. And, uh, 
An argument just like this would work. You'd get slope, uh, you'd get the, uh, the uh, derivative, well, the slopes of the tangent lines on the one side would be positive, the slopes of the tangent lines on the other side would be negative. So here, not differentiable, let the tangent line travel through. At this point, which I moved over to A, at this point A, we can't just, we can't really glide from this uh, tangent line to the next. You have to do this jarring motion to get from one to the other. A little more on that in a moment. Uh, but there are two other types of curves which are continuous but not differentiable. That corner point, or the, that function, is continuous at that corner point because we could draw it without lifting our curve, or without lifting our writing implement. Next, maybe I should have drawn this before erasing so you had a moment to look at it. Next, that's a lousy drawing. Next, that's almost better. I mean, I don't necessarily need to put arrows. I guess if I do arrows for one, I should do arrows for all of them. Next, we have this situation. So it's no longer a corner because we have uh, this curved motion as we approach this point and a similar curved notion as we go away from that point. Um, you know, if, if it's not entirely clear what this looks like, this looks like a, how we're told to draw birds flying in the sky in an art class. Um, this is not a corner. It looks kind of like a corner. It's not a corner. We call this a cusp. C-U-S-P. And why is this function not differentiable, in this case, at A? Well, again, let's look at tangent lines. Well, tangent lines. As we approach A from the left, the tangent lines have negative slope. And look at that. They approach, they look like they're approaching a negative infinity, these tangent lines, the slopes of these tangent lines. Negative, it's going downhill, and it keeps getting more negative as it approaches A. Um, hopefully, it, if you wrote this down, you're following with uh, using your pen as a tangent line. Well, I should say your pen as a tangent line, but on a board, pen is not very illustrative. So on the left of A, we have slopes which go down to, in this case, negative infinity. But of course, with some transformations, we could, you know, we can like flatten this out a little um, and make it approach like a negative five and a positive five. Um, but still, it goes to a negative number. What about on the right of A? Well. On the right of A, uh, what happens? Well, you could start at A and travel on the curve. You can start at A, travel on the curve. We have a large positive number, and it's still a positive number away from A. If you want to actually approach A, well, you could start up here, like at a tangent line up there. It's positive, and as it approaches A, because that's really what the limit's looking at, it's getting more positive. So, positive slope. As it approaches A, it's getting more positive. So on the left of A, the tangent lines have a negative slope, and they approach, uh, a ne and they're getting more negative, let's say. Negative slope, getting more negative. On the right of A, as you approach A, positive slope, which gets more positive. So the derivative at that point, well, the limit um, of the slope of the secant line will not exist, consequently, the derivative will not exist at A. Um, the third one, uh, there may be, well, let's discuss this third one. Um, in math, it is sometimes convenient to strike infinity from consideration. It's sometimes convenient to include infinity in consideration. Um, for a limit, if the limit equals infinity, the limit technically does not exist. Um, in the definition of a limit, we said limit f of x equals l if whatever. l is a real number, so it's not infinity. Um, so right here, at a, we have what is known as 
a vertical tangent at A. So the tangent line at A is vertical. That will, we will take by definition, uh, that the derivative, the slope of this line, well, let's look at the slopes of the lines as they approach A. Well, on the right of A, or sorry, on the left of A, we have these positive slopes, which keep getting more positive. So we have positive slopes, which approach positive infinity as we approach A, because we have a vertical tangent here. It's positive, getting more positive, approaching a positive infinity. On the right of A, we have a positive slope getting more positive until it approaches this uh, vertical tangent. Positive slope, more positive, more positive, more positive, more positive. It approaches positive infinity. Um, and in this case, we will conclude the limit does not exist because technically f prime at A would approach infinity. On either side of A, um, we're going to assume that that gives us a non-differentiable, or a, a point of non-differentiability. Um, I'm going to give one example of this, and I'm going to uh, show what it would look like. To define this, we would need a piecewise function. Um, so I, I might put one of those on a worksheet. Um, for this one, I'm just going to, well, to do it most conveniently, we need something from the next lecture, which I will pull from. Um, so for case 3, consider the example. Um, if I ask you one of these three things on a worksheet or a homework or a test, it will be either a case 1 or a case 2. It will not be a case 3. Um, I, mean, I find case three much less interesting. The cube root of x, what does the cube root of x look like? The cube root of x looks like that curve over there, but where the vertical tangent is through uh, the point zero, zero. Um, I will tell you um, let's draw an arrow to this. Lecture, uh, what number, what week? We're in week five. 5.2. Um, so in the next lecture, lecture 5.2, we are going to learn uh, some derivative rules. And uh, I'm going to pull from that for this example so that it uh, goes, uh, goes more nicely. Um, and, th and this is actually part of the reason I will not ask this one um, on a test or a homework. But the other two, uh, we could, I, I could ask. And how does this simplify? Don't worry about getting rid of the two thirds. We'll leave it as two thirds. F prime of x, you can take right now um, as a fact for this case, F prime of x is given by this formula. Um, in lecture 5.2, we will go over um, how we get that. Um, but how does this simplify? Well, the negative exponent goes in the bottom. Um, I would write that there, but I, I probably won't have room, so I'll just write it over here. Um, f prime of 0. What's f prime of 0? Well, you get 1 over 3 times 0 to the 2 thirds. Does not exist. Um, well, I won't say because, I'll say and uh, limit as x approaches 0 from the left, from the right of f prime of x equals positive infinity. Limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f prime of x equals positive infinity as well. Um, and you can get that from uh, an extension of the 1 over x graph um, with the power rule for limits. Um, so f prime of 0 doesn't exist. You can't do a substitution to figure it out, so we look at both sides. We get a positive infinity on both sides, and you can see that this computation here actually is giving us the slopes of these tangent lines. Um, but I did want to point out uh, what a function with one of these does look like. 
Um, so um, differentiability is important. The theorem where if f is con if f is differentiable, then it continues is a very important theorem in math. Um, I didn't discuss the proof of that theorem. Um, I don't really like the proof of that that much. Um, you start with the definition of derivative at a point. You multiply by a convenient one, and remember, multiply by a convenient one O N E. Um, and remember, multiplying by one doesn't change uh, the, what you have. So you can multiply by one, and that doesn't change anything. Um, but you start with the definition of derivative at a point. Multiply by one, that doesn't change it. Add a convenient zero, uh, that also doesn't change it. And then um, the continuous relation kind of pops out if you simplify it in a clever way. Um, and I think it's kind of tedious. Um, but the counterexamples are all very important. Um, I will not, again, will not ask about three. Um, I won't ask for a specific example of three. I may ask you to say that a vertical tangent is um, a potential, well, it gives a counterexample to that uh, converse of the theorem. Um, but the details for the uh, corner function and for the cusp function are important. Um, and I will put a cusp one on the worksheet. I just decided in the last two minutes that's a pretty good question to put on the worksheet. Um, so um, focus on uh, trying to apply the argument we applied to the absolute value function to the cusp function on the worksheet. It's a, uh, um, yeah, you'll get something kind of like this. <laughs> 